Okay, so welcome to this final video on nitrovasodilators. Okay, um, so we're trying to understand how nitrovasodilators work to uh, treat angina pectoris. So I told you that they're going to dilate uh, the uh, major veins of the body. That's going to decrease the blood pressure within the veins. That then is going to mean that the amount of blood that's forced into the heart uh, when it relaxes, i.e. the amount of blood that's forced into the heart from these veins is going to decrease because the pressure has decreased. So the driving force of the blood into the heart has reduced, basically. Okay, so you get less blood in the heart uh, now when it contracts. And what that means is that the heart is having to contract on a smaller volume of blood. And if you imagine contracting on a smaller volume of blood, that's going to take uh, less force, basically. So the amount of work the heart has to do to expel the blood from the heart actually is reduced because the volume of blood that's in the heart is going to be reduced because uh, mean venous pressure has gone down. And that is believed to underlie how nitrovasodilators save the heart, basically. Um, now you might say, well, isn't this slightly um, bad? Because if we're putting less heart into the sorry less blood into the heart, then the amount of blood that we're actually expelling, the stroke volume should go down. And yes, it will slightly. Um, but um, and uh, well, and you might say, okay, but that was the whole point. The whole point of this was we needed the cardiac output to go up in order to deliver enough uh, nutrients to our skeletal muscle. Basically, my argument to that would be the skeletal muscle will just have to cope. The heart is more important, basically. Um, so um, we take pri we prioritize uh, getting enough blood to the heart, well, reducing the work of the heart rather than um, delivering enough blood to the skeletal muscle, basically. And that's uh, the basis of how nitro um, sorry, nitro um, vasodilators work to treat angina.